Good afternoon on what is a mild, grey and overcast day. I'm in the reading up with, um, oh, let's just get that, um, nice hot cup of tea. And a cat who is not ours, um, who is in search of a lap. And some boxes to unbox. So let's get to it, let's find out what's in here. Very scrappy box here. Anything could have done with a bit of a bit more padding, I would suggest. But hey, let's um, pull uh, this out. Uh, this is um, Dungeon Call Classics um, 70 um, uh, Adventure 79, um, a level one adventure frozen in time. Um, now Dungeon Crawl Classics is a retro clone kind of derived from Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition 3.5 but heavily influenced by Appendix N from the classic um, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 1st uh, edition Dungeon Master's Guide. So essentially the Appendix N is all the inspiration, so all the fiction and so on uh, that inspired E. Gary Gygax and Dave Morrison in, in, in creating and writing Dungeons and Dragons. In particular Gygax for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but um, Goodman Games publishes the Gundam World Classics and does its own thing. So, um, Aeon's old advent secrets slumber beneath the go forbidden ghost ice. Since the time of the elders, the local tribes have shunned the crawling glacier, knowing it is a taboo land that slays all who tread its frigid expanse. Now the ghost ice has shattered, revealing hints at deeper mysteries in tune within its icy grasp. Strange machines and wonderful horrors stir beneath the ice. So, um, okay, this includes um, includes the Forlorn North um, mini campaign setting, and I'm wondering, and perhaps you're wondering, going, is this is this is sort of like it verges on sort of like the uh, it's got an elements of science fiction there because that's a robot, which means is this going to be compatible with something like Mutant Crawl Classics, which does which is science fantasy, which is a post-apocalyptic setting also published by uh, Goodman Games. So we open up um, and we have um, essentially uh, an illustration of the location, um, sorry, it's essentially a map of the location, um, which is a power plant, uh, middle of heat exchange and so on, and then a level of one adventure, the introduction, basically the adventurers attempting to climb the glacier, threatened by a giant bear. An introduction, the adventure background, how to start the how to start the adventure, as you would expect, and then we get onto the ghost ice, and we've got some kind of illustration, sort of like some technical, um, some, some technicians there, uh, possibly running the, um, like the, the the power plant, and something's gone wrong. Uh, and then we get to the vault of Zepes Null Eleven. Um, doorways into the vaults, uh, either wire lift tubes or loose gratings, exhaust tubes, that sort of thing, and going further and deeper in. And this is, yeah, it's basically, you know, um, it's a modern or near sort of like science fiction future setting as turned into a dungeon. And that's really very much a feature of um, a uh, um, of a role playing game like Mutant Crawl Classics, where you have. Uh, research facilities and power facilities and uh, industrial facilities and that sort of thing or undersea research labs turn into dungeons and it really works really well however um, and um, here we have <laughs> oh this is this is very amusing yes okay we have the death of Cra Greg the Gatherer kin of Tor you know, basically having his head snapped off um, in very gruesome fashion uh, by a Tyrannosaurus Rex um, and this is you've got you, you've got Hugh the Barbarian, basically the uh, sort of like um, signature character um, for Dungeon Core Classics. He features on the front cover of the Core Rules, um, and then we've got the encounter with um, the robot 
um, which is not a, essentially this is a robot, is it, which is not a little difference to Robbie the robot. Um, it's that kind of style, that kind of um, I don't know Japanese ro t tin toy robot sort of look to it. Uh, and then concluding the adventure. Um, so it's quite a short adventure. They generally are. You can play through these in about one or two sessions. Uh, but Appendix N includes some background to uh, the settings so you can expand upon it a little bit. So we've got primitive occupations table. And this is sort of suitable for um, creating uh, zero level characters. Zero level characters um, are important in Dungeons & Dragons Classics because you can do something called a character funnel where uh, each player takes three or four of these zero level characters and plays through the equivalent of like a first level adventure um, and hopes, to, hopes that some of them will survive. If they do, they gain enough experience points, they, go, they, they step up to first level and actually gain a proper class. Uh, so both Dungeon Crawl Classics and Mutant Crawl Classics does this um, and what generally what happens is, is you, it, it's actually a really quite effective uh, way of creating your character's background. Because you role play all four, you, when you play, you role play all four characters and you get attached to them. And you don't want them to die, but you know, some of them are going to die, some of them are going to get unlucky. And then, you know, if yours die, you basically, you can take other, um, you either get replacements or you sort of share them out with the other players. Because they're not really necessarily yours, they're sort of like more or less like a shared resource to try and get through the dungeon. Anyway, um, and you can build up backstories between them and so on, you know, so it, it's really fun. So we've got a better map there of um, the cutaway, cutaway of the glacier, that's, that's really useful. And then the main level there. Um, and then we've got a section on the frozen north, uh, including a map, um, you know, with a brief history, lights in the sky, a gazetteer, um, all the way down here, and then we've got adventure seats at the bottom. And then um, we're with the band, and here's the illustration of sort of like the, of the, the sort of like the core four-player character types, um, sort, of, sort of feature in all of the artwork for Dungeon Crawl Classics. So um, right now we're basically it's it, as I record this video, um, scenarios um, 102, 101 for the Dungeon Crawl Classics range have come out. Um, let's see, if there's a date on this. Must be, must be, must be. Um, 2013, 2013, so yeah, 2013. Um, so essentially, there have been another 30 uh, modules since some more content for, for Dungeon Core Classics and so on, including Lankmar and Empire of the East and so on, and Sacred Coffee and all these expansions. And so, so uh, Goodman Games is not, is, is not exactly um, uh, far from, from, from unbusy, and it always supports this line with lots of interesting and um, interesting adventures. And if you're looking for a retro line, I thoroughly recommend it. It's a lot of fun, um, and similarly, Moot Core Classics is fun. But I like the look of this adventure. Um, I think you could easily adapt it to Mutant Crawl Classics with a bit of work. The setting of the Frozen North looks interesting, sort of like, you know, uh, Barbarian North sort of thing, if you wanted to create a bit of a background for your Barbarian North characters. Um, uh, but it does have that kind of thing where um, uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics will create backgrounds for their scenarios and some of their settings and sort of like never quite really follow through on giving you more content. And that can be sometimes can be a bit disappointing. Nonetheless, probably going to be a great adventure. I uh, look forward to reading and reviewing this, maybe even running it. Um, I can find some willing victims. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching another unboxing in the Nook. If you have enjoyed this, then please do click on the like button down below. And of course, um, if you've got any comments or feedback, I do appreciate you taking the time uh, to post, uh, post that. And lastly, if you want to be alerted to yet more unboxings in the Nook, where you'll see me out here um, with um, a box uh, containing a book or game which I will um, unbox and chat about to the, to the best extent of knowledge for roughly 10 minutes or so, all of course accompanied by a nice cup of tea. And in this case, a cat who is not ours, who has assumed his place on my lap, then please do hit that subscribe button down below. In the meantime, thanks again for watching another unboxing in the Nook. Be back again soon with another one. Bye for now.